Hi, and uh, welcome now to Unit 4. I trust that you've been learning from Unit 1, 2 into 3. And in Unit 4, we are going to be spending some time talking about neurotoxic envenoming or envenomation. Like I said earlier, I'll be using those interchangeably. And it's neurotoxic envenoming, the cobras and mambas. So by the end of this unit, the participant must be able to describe the common signs and symptoms associated with neurotoxic envenomation. Two, briefly describe and recognize Zimbabwean snakes associated with uh, serious neurotoxic envenomation. Three, name a non elapid uh, species or snake which leads to neurotoxic envenomation. Four, state which regions of Zimbabwe the medically important neurotoxic envenoming snakes are found. And finally, five, name two genera of uh, elapids with mildly neurotoxic venom. So let's move on. So when you talk of neurotoxic envenoming, what should come to mind uh, is uh, involvement of the central nervous system largely, although the peripheral nervous system may also be involved. And most of the times when we talk about snakes which uh, result in neurotoxic envenoming, you'd find that with most of them, there is little to no swelling. And of course here, obvious uh, exceptions would be um, the, the, the snouted cobra, which we have here, which we talked about earlier, which also does exhibit some uh, cytotoxic uh, envenoming with some swelling which can actually occur. But generally, um, especially with the, the mambas, you would not expect there to be any swelling. And then also there is what is called descending paralysis. Um, and you know, some of the signs and symptoms which I have beneath here are a part of that particular uh, syndrome. So people might start to, a person might start to experience tingling, a tingling sensation on the tongue, as well as a metallic taste. And you know, that's, that's just evidence that there's been some uh, neurotoxic envenomation which has actually occurred. And one classical one is ptosis, which is most of the times associated with uh, severe or serious uh, envenomation. And uh, ptosis, basically, this is a picture of uh, someone who's uh, suffering from ptosis. Uh, we'll see, I'm sure this picture again. And it's uh, like droopy eyes. So this person is conscious, but they are failing to keep their eyes open. And it's a result of uh, paralysis of um, some nerves and uh, various facial muscles around here. And then you can have vomiting and nausea. And then there is profuse stringy saliva, largely as a result of the fact that someone might uh, be unable to, to swallow. You know, so they, we've got dysphagia inability to 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 eat or swallow dyspnea that's a difficulty to swallow dyspnea that's that's difficulty to breathe and then most of the times death uh, from uh, these neurotoxic envenoming snakes is as a result of respiratory depression so your your diaphragm simply stops working and you know um that's that's how many people would die so neurotoxic envenomation is something that we basically would worry more about. And what you'll find is uh, most of the snakes that we have here, at least the important medical ones, maybe the important ones medically, they are pretty large snakes. You know, like your black mamba is a pretty large snake and your snouted cobra is a pretty large snake as well. So the venom dose which is delivered is pretty high and um, the, the, the likelihood of serious uh, consequences, uh, you know, they, 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 are, they are much higher. So we tend to be more concerned when someone is bitten by a neurotoxic snake, um, at least with regards to the person's uh, living or not, than who would be if someone is bitten by a cytotoxic snake. So in terms okay. of neurotoxic uh, envenoming snakes in Zimbabwe, like I said earlier, most neurotoxic envenoming or envenomation, it's normally associated with the elapids. That's your mambas and your cobras largely. 
But we've also got an interesting species, which is known as the berg adder, which we talked about earlier uh, when we were talking about cytotoxic snakes. Uh, and we're talking specifically about vipers. That's Bitis atropos, which has got a very interesting, different venom from the other uh, snakes in the viper in the viper family. And the venom is actually a, a neurotoxic one. We'll talk slightly about it maybe a, a, a bit later. And then of the dangerously venomous neurotoxic elapis that we have here in Zimbabwe, uh, we've got the cobras. And cobras are pretty easy. Well, I say that with a bit of caution. Uh, pretty easy to identify because these snakes, when they are agitated, they spread a hood, just like you are seeing here with uh, a snouted cobra. And there, that's a bended version of a snouted cobra. So they're pretty, most people would, would, would recognize a cobra, at least when it, was, it is agitated because of its ability to spread that wood. And in Zimbabwe, we have um, uh, four cobras, but uh, we have got three which would have signs and symptoms which are related to neurotoxicity. And that is the snouted cobra, Naja annulifera, Anchieta's cobra, or Anchieta, depends how you want to pronounce it. Anchieta's cobra, which is Naja Anchieta. And uh, the forest cobra, which is Naja Subfulva. Never mind this Naja, I'm not sure how it got there. And then in Zimbabwe, we've also got two species of mambas. The first one is the famous uh, dreaded black mamba, the most feared snake. In Africa, at least I would like to say, uh, Dendraspis, polyleps, polylepis, and then the other one is the Eastern uh, Green Mamba, Dendraspis angus, and angusticeps. And then we've also got some other elapids whose venom is not as uh, deadly, so to speak, as the venom of the cobra and the mambas, and these are your gutter snakes as well as your shield-nosed uh, snakes, which have got a mildly neurotoxic uh, envenomation. So just talk a little bit about the elapids, because these are the ones that are responsible for most of the neurotoxic uh, snakes, neurotoxic uh, envenomation. So they're normally pretty big snakes, like I said earlier, and they include your mambas and your cobras, and, and the wrinkles also are in this, in, in this, uh, in this family. But remember, we met these wrinkles earlier when we were talking about cytotoxic uh, envenomation. So the wrinkles would not, at least would not be expected to have uh, a venom which is uh, largely neurotoxic, but it's, it, it's more cytotoxic, like your spitting, uh, spitting cobra, your Mozambique spitting cobra. And they all have large, hollow, non-hinged fangs situated in the front of the mouth, right over there. And if you recall the vipers, the fangs were also large, but they were hinged. With elapis, they are non-hinged, which means they are fixed right there in the front. So the neurotoxic uh, elapids that we have in Zimbabwe, um, as said earlier, um, of, of, of the ones that we have, of, of the mambas, the black mamba has got a venom which is uh, several times more potent than that of a green mamba. So if somebody really chooses to be bitten, you'd rather be bitten by a black mamba than to be bitten by a green mamba because it's got a very, very potent neurotoxic venom. And then just to repeat this again, like I said earlier, bites from the snouted cobra and anchiator's cobra which is a very very close relative of it you you, you cannot you know really differentiate between these two snakes by the the the, the, the number of scales at the back one is 19 the other one uh, has, has 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 um this has, has got 17. so as well as the forest cobra these snakes have got uh, up in addition to the neurotoxic uh, signs and symptoms that you find they've also got a cytotoxicity which is associated with them and then bites from the gutter snakes and the shield nose snakes may also show cytotoxicity in addition to neurotoxicity, but largely it's the neurotoxicity that we worry about. So the gutter snakes and the shield nose snakes, um, well, we will not say any further details about them, but just that you should know 
that these snakes uh, do exist and that they do cause some mild neurotoxic environment. So we'll start with the snouted cobra as well as the unguated cobra. Like I said, they are very, very close. And the only difference, you know, you, you, you'd be able to, to, to see by counting the number of scales at the back um, right here. So the snouted cobra uh, also exists in a banded form. This is the banded form. And this is the non-banded uh, banded form. And Anchieta's uh, uh, cobra, like we said earlier, is very similar to it. So in areas where the snouted cobra is not there, normally it is replaced by the Anchieta's cobra. So you find that the two of them, the snouted cobra and Anchieta's cobra, are found throughout Zimbabwe, with Anchieta's cobra being found more towards the region of uh, Victoria Falls in, in, in that particular area, a small portion of, of then the next one is the, the black mamba. Um, beautiful snake can grow well above three meters. They are very long ones which have been found. If kept in captivity, can even grow much, 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 much longer. And like I like saying, it's perhaps the most feared snake uh, in Africa. Um, and and I, I recall watching one documentary and I always tell my students this story and end up laughing by myself, but I, I'll just say it anyhow. I remember watching one documentary and then they featured and the, the black mamba and they said, and the African black mamba, when you see this snake, turn and run. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm laughing by myself. Again, so it's an interesting snake. It holds the record of being the fastest land uh, snake in the world with, this, uh, with speeds of up to 19 kilometers per hour. And when this snake is cornered, it has the ability to strike more than once with some people receiving up to three or four bites in succession. It's a pretty shy snake. So generally, it doesn't really want to interact with mammals larger than itself, and normally it quickly escapes when approached. Venom is a very potent neurotoxin, which um, leads to uh, dyspnea, respiratory distress, um, which can actually start to manifest pretty early with some, you know, depending on where the, the bite occurred. You know, like if you remember from your unit one, we mentioned some of the factors which affect severity of snake bite. If you get a good bite somewhere close to the heart, somewhere in your neck, etc., you know, the envenomation can actually start to show pretty quickly. And uh, the venom results in descending uh, muscular paralysis. So you, you find the person unable to swallow they are drooling, stringy, uh, saliva, unable to open their eyes, there's facial paralysis, and it's, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible venom. And death occurs, like we said earlier, as a result of respiratory depression. Actually, not black in color, it's more of olive green in color. Sometimes they've got a shade of grayish. Not a shiny snake, as you can see. Black mamba, because of the black lining of its mouth, and like I like to say to my to my students, <laughs> and again, I laugh by myself at the end of it, but if I were a Hollywood uh, a director and I had a movie called The Black Mamba, and I had to come up with uh, a trailer, I would have it somewhere just before the trailer ends that the last thing that you see before you die is the blackness of the mouth. <sighs> then we'd have the mamba striking forward. But anyhow, moving right. And then that's the cousin. Uh, the green mamba, which fortunately you, you find only in the eastern highlands uh, of Zimbabwe, also with a, a neurotoxic venom, but not as potent as that of uh, the black mamba. And the black mamba, um, I, I did not mention in the last slide, is actually found in all parts of the country. So you find it everywhere in Zimbabwe. But you've got different regions. There are some places where it is known that you know, more black mambas there than anywhere else. And then the anomaly, the exception, the Berg adder. So it's not a, it's 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 not a, a, a an, an elapid. Um, it's actually a, a viper. And once again, it's restricted to the eastern highlands of Zimbabwe. The eastern highlands is got beautiful, like all the deadly snakes you can think about. You find them in the eastern highlands. So a fascinating snake. It's got an unusual neurotoxic venom. Uh, which attacks the optic and uh, facial nerves 
and people who've been bitten by this snake, they they some lose the ability to to smell, some lose the ability to they to to they they they, they can't taste things in their mouths, um, and others you know they've got issues with uh, vision. Uh, some have got temporary blindness, which can actually occur for a couple of days. So it's a very interesting snake. Very few um, bites are actually recorded in literature, but a very interesting snake nonetheless for healthcare professionals to know about. And then I just thought I would share with you some of the some of some pictures of people who who've been bitten by snakes. This is published from the WHO. Uh, uh, guidelines for the prevention and clinical management of snake bite in Africa. So we saw this earlier. So, you know, someone suffering from uh, uh, ptosis um, and ophthalm ophthalmoplegia and facial paralysis following neurotoxic snakes. So this one, this one, this one was bitten by a, a, a black mamba. But this one, you see what we're talking about. This one was, was actually bitten by the uh, 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 the Berg adder or Betis atropos. Yeah. There we have again, you know, neurotoxicity from a Berg adder, Betis atropos. The patient is uh, contracting the forehead, you know. So he's trying to 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 keep his eye open. So it's ptosis, classical ptosis, trying to open his eyes, but you know, it's, it's difficult for him to open his eyes. Um, then here we've got someone who's undergoing clinical, uh, former clinical testing for ptosis uh, in a patient. He's been bitten by um, in 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 elapid. So this is like uh, testing for for elapid neurotoxicity. And we hope that at some point in time we'll be able to mount a course, you know, where we can talk about the clinical issues um, being presented by uh, a physician of cortex treating these patients. So there you have it. Neurotoxic envenomation. Um, we've seen the mambas. We've seen the cobras. We've talked about gutter snakes. We've talked about shield nose snakes. We've talked about the berg adder. And now it's time for you to test your knowledge. So it's quiz time. Have fun. And see you in the next unit, Unit 5, where we'll continue having fun in snakes. Until then, this is Professor Toxins, Prof Dex. I'm saying I'll see you later.